comes with a heart's desire to please our Lord by serving wherever he leads her. She knew his call was upon her life and she sought to fulfill this call through various areas of ministry. Nothing was too small or too large for her to perform. She worked extensively with children through in-home Bible time, sharing lessons on their levels. She worked with those who were sick at Kane Hospital and through ministering to the needs of those sick and shut in by caring for them in any need she could. Feeding, clothing, cleaning, shopping, and making sure they received proper medical attention. She has witnessed through Bible and tract distribution, personal sharing and encouraging. Souls being saved has been her heart's desire. She is a graduate of Hardy Bible School, receiving a certificate for completion and prophecy, discipline, and a diploma for graduation, 1996. She has also received numerous certificates for studies and participation in classes to enhance her work as an evangelist and church ministry worker. Evangelist Frida Miller is not a stranger to the McKeesport area and is known by many as a helper and one ready and willing to share and to serve others as she serves our Lord. She is an active member of the Special Needs Department and a part of the prayer team. Oh, sorry. She is an active member of the McKeesport Beacon Light Church of God, serving as the outreach director, support to the missions and special needs department, and a part of the prayer team. She is the mother of three married adult daughters, Lorraine Queen, Carmela Collier, and Melissa Sewell, with her three sons-in-law, Michael Queen Sr., Ricky Collier, and Albert Sewell Sr. She has added two recent adopted sons, Justin and Savion Miller. We receive with joy this precious evangelist, Frida Miller, as she delivers the message our Lord has placed on her heart for all who will hear what the Spirit is saying to his church. Yes. Now we will hear the voice of Sister Pamela Bates, and following her voice we'll hear the message Sister Frida is going to provide for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to change my song. I'm going to sing. He'll do it again. This is a song. Uh, years ago, I was, it was a Saturday, and I was at this event, and I sang this song, He'll Find a Way. And the Lord spoke to me, and I put it on my heart just to sing that for Sister Frida. And um, that evening, I was cleaning out my bag, all my tapes and things, you know, put some away that I wouldn't be singing in a while. And I came across this one. I said, I'm not going to be doing that for a while. And the Lord said, won't you just keep it in your bag? And I was like, no, I'm going to put it up on the shelf. He said, well, he said, how much weight would it add to your bag? I said, well, I'm not going to sing it for a while, but I'll, I'll keep it in there. <laughs> and so we got to church. Sister Frida was so sick she didn't come to church. But it was on my heart to sing that song, He'll Find a Way. And so I said, can we go to our house so I can sing this song for her? And when we got there... I could just feel the spirit of heaviness that was there. She was about to slate it for surgery. And um, whatever was on TV, it was supposed to be a, a ministry, but it was like Dry's last year's burden. I was like, wow, no wonder she's down. She has to listen to that. And so um, as I was getting my uh, tapes in order and everything, and she was talk, talking about the things she was facing, she said, um, I'm going to have to have skin grafts. And she burst into tears and started crying. And this song came to me, he'll do it again. And I put that song yes. in, and the Lord came in there in such a way, it's amazing they didn't call the police on us. We were screaming <laughs> and hollering and everything, you know. But we were killing that spirit of discouragement, and God came in, he touched her body, healed her, you know. It, it was just such a wonderful time. So I'm going to do that song, he'll do it again. Amen. 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 You may be down 
and feel that God has somehow forgotten that your things with circumstances that you can't get through. Right now it seems there's no way out and you're going under.
to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, I love you today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, I love you today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord, I love you today. Oh, praise the name Praise Lord. God, you too. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory, Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We read the scripture in um, Psalms 42. And I'm going to speak for Psalm 42, I think, all the way down to. All the way. I'm just. Lord, I worship you and I magnify you, God, because you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be magnified. Lord God, I come to worship you, oh God, because this is the day that you have made. God and I will be glad. Rejoice and be glad. I thank you, God, for the newness of life and what you're doing down inside of me in the mighty name of you. God, now bless your word, God. I do got people in their hearts, oh God, in Jesus' name. And I pray right now that the fire of the Holy Ghost will fall on this service right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for the fire. Yes, Send him on down, Lord. Send him on down. Yes, In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. We just praise you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Psalm 42. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just bear with me just a minute. I did have everything, but I'll be all right in a minute. Thank you, Praise Lord. Right. I'm still. I did not know what to, to speak about, and I woke up this morning. I wrestled with it all night long. And I woke up this morning and the Lord put in my spirit, Psalms 42, All right. just a couple of verses. And uh, it's still speaking about a little bit about dryness. Yes. But it's also speaking about a thirst. Mm -hmm. And it says, as the deer panted after the water brook, so I panted after the old Lord. But I want to give you a little intro. Anointing is on me, so praise God. Bless the Lord. That's all right. Yes. All right. But my intro is spiritual dehydration. All right. If you know anything about being dehydrated, that's what this lesson is going to be about today. It says more and more today we're ha we're, we're we're having more we're hearing more about one of the greatest threats of an athlete. And anyone in, involved in any type of rigorous activity like football, baseball, or whatever, they usually get dehydrated if they don't drink uh, enough water and get enough water in their body. And sometimes when we don't drink the Word of God, we get dehydrated. We get dry, we get a thirst and we get sick, we start to feel faint, and we start to feel weak, and we wonder what's going on. Mm -hmm. In an age where, in an age when 
Virtually everything related to sports carries a corporate logo or a celebrate endorsement. There were, there's still one that has no commercial affiliation. It is the most important liquid of all water. Water is vital for those who exercise or work in high, hot temperatures. Now, dehydration occurs when the fluid is not taken, is, is, not, is not sufficient to replace the amount of fluid in, that is lost. When a person is dehydrated, there is a reduced volume of blood in the body. I don't know too much about that, but I know your uh, sister Yvette does. But anyway, less volume, less blood to the body. Then, in, in turn, affects the body ability to wash and waste and other necessary chemical. Since there is a lot, wait a minute, excuse me, my eyes is just clipped, just cloudy. Since there is a reduced volume of blood flow, the heart has to work harder and pump faster in order to meet the body's demand. There are several ways a person can lose water in their body. Through the skin, through the lung, through the blood, and even through the stomach. However, when the amount of fluid loss is not, is not compensated for, this leads to fatigue and dizziness and eventually dehydration. Sadly enough, there is something even more threatening to many Christians today. It's called spiritual dehydration. All right. And that's the name of right. my topic today. Spiritual right. dehydration. For too long we have used we have used soft drinks and sport drinks. Mm -hmm. Our religion is to try to compensate for their water for the inner man. That's right. You can't use soft drinks. You have to have water. Amen. When you're out there playing sports or doing anything that's active, water is not, it's not, I mean, juice and uh, Kool-Aid and whatever mm -hmm. else is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do what you need to do in your body. Your okay. body needs water to play the role that it needs to play to keep you from having spiritual dehydration. Uh -huh. Now, in Psalm 42, we get a clear picture here of suffering with the spiritual dehydration. The earnest desire. We want to talk a little bit about spirit weariness. David is in search of, a God, of God. It's not as if he's sitting idle by, but he's on a mission to find him. Are you on a mission? Right. Are you looking for Jesus? Yes. yes. He describes his condition as a barren, dry condition. Barren means there's nothing there. He's empty. Mm -hmm. His dry condition is dry. And he's looking for the say he's looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is has a longing and a thirsting for God. He in this picture of a ordinary longing, my soul is panting after God. That's what David said. He says, as a heart, you know what a heart is? A heart is like a deer. Mm -hmm. And a deer gets into the water. Sometimes they play. Sometimes but when they get thirsty, they stick their head down and get a drink and sit, stick their tongue out, look a little, 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 lick it up, <laughs> and talk about, it's good. And they go back and get some more. Well, that's what a deer do. And that's what David said. My heart is after a water brook. My heart. Do you know what it is? It's a desire. It's a sincere, strong desire that you really want God. That you're longing to be in His presence and to be with Him. My heart is after a water. My soul. My soul has a hunger for you. My soul has a desire, an intense desire. I desire to have the Lord. Nobody else will do. Nobody but God. That's what David was saying. Hallelujah, glory to God. And I like David because David was a man that would repent. 
when he did something wrong, he didn't hesitate. He repented right away. And I like that. He prayed. He was a praying man. Just as a deer longed for a stream, David longed for Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Psalm 63, 1 to 5 said, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. I'm searching for you, Lord. You, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Yes. My soul thirst. Hallelujah. Yes. Do you know what thirst is? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thirst is what I am right now. Hallelujah. I thirst longing for the Lord. Yes. Thirst is when you want some water and you're all dried yes. up inside. Yes. And you just can't yes. wait to get a glass of water. Yes. And you drink one and you drink another and you drink another. But it's not yes. going to satisfy you. The only way your thirst will be quenched if you go to the quench thirster. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He'll quench your thirst. Hallelujah. You'll never thirst again. Glory to God. I'm talking about the living water. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm talking about the water that springs up from the inside of. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the water that we need to live by. Let me tell you something. 
Hallelujah, but I praise God for Pastor Faith. Praise, praise God. Amen. Oh, you, Lord, Thank consistent. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And I told the Lord, if you deliver my mind, if you put me in a place, hallelujah, that's stable, Thank and don't let them put me away, I said I would go to church every time the church door was open. Well, for a while that proved true. Hallelujah. And I asked the pastor, would she come and pick me up? And that was during the time the pastor was picking people up and taking them back and forth to the church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I came to church consistently every time the door opened. But then there came a time where I got high-minded and I thought I didn't have to, you know, God had delivered my mind. And when he delivered my mind, he set me free. And when he set me free, I know oh, I'm free now. <laughs> you, know, you know how we do. God bless us. And then after God bless us for a while, we don't need, we don't, we don't yeah, go right on about our business. Not knowing and not thinking that the same thing can come on you all over again. And even a worse state. Yes. Yes. And the Lord brought that to my kitchen and I thought about it and I said, oh, I better get back to church. I got back to church all right. Let me tell you, I got back to church, but I didn't get back to church on time. I got back to church when I wanted to get back to church. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Instead of coming with the church door open at 10.30, like Pastor Bay said, I would come at 11 or 11.30. Walking out of the will of God, out of the obedience to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you want to serve God, we got to stay in His will. We got to right. walk in obedience. That's right. If we want to eat the good of the land, we got to walk in obedience. That's right. Disobedience. Yeah. God is not into disobedience. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because if you disobey God, you got a price to pay. Got a price to pay. You got a price to pay. Amen. It's better to be obeyed. Yeah. God than to obey man. Yeah. It's better. Glory to God. It appears that they had. There is not much solace in a wilderness experience, but one company thought that we are not the first, nor will we be the last to have such an encounter like this. All true saints have had their experience of being in the wilderness. Psalm 28 said. You I call, O Lord, my, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down to the pit. Hear, hear my cry for mercy as I lift up my hand towards your most holy place. Psalm 38, 9, 10, say, All my longing lie open before you. Oh Lord, my sight is not hid from you. My heart pounds, my strength fails me, even the light has gone from my eyes. You know, there was a time we had a bright light shining in our eyes. People could look at us and tell who we was and where we came. You know, they knew that we belonged to God. Hallelujah. But the light went out. Sorry how we need the light under the moisture. We don't have that light no more. God wants us to get the light back. Because he is the light. Yeah. He's the light of the world. Yeah. And if you don't have the light, you don't have Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, he's the light of the world. Yeah. And he's the yeah. light of me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. It appears that they had wilderness experience back in the Old Testament time. And they had wilderness experience in the New Testament time. Yes. They had it. And you're going to have wilderness spirit in your time. Hallelujah. But how will you handle it and what will you do? Uh -huh. There are many songs that seem to reach into your heart when you are experiencing dryness. Yes. King David was no stranger to the wilderness experience. Yes. And yet he was a man after God's own heart. Yes. 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 He was a man after God's own heart. What is it with these dry times? Why do they occur? What value do they have? What do we learn from these dry times? Hallelujah, glory to God. The reason for spiritual blahs, spiritual dryness, 
or the, or the wilderness experience. It's God's way of getting us to exercise our faith in any area where we get little opportunity for special obedience. Faith. We need faith. We yes. need to build our faith up. And sometimes trials come to build us up in God's most holy faith. Faith. The songs say faith. Faith. Just a little bit That's of faith. That's all we need is just yeah. a little bit Amen. of faith. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's, hallelujah, glory, God. If you are a half-hearted Christian, I call the half-hearted Christians half-baked Christians. They die on one side and raw in the middle and raw on the other side. They not down all the way through. This is what I call half-baked Christians. Hallelujah. Right. God don't want us to be half-baked. He don't want us to be gummy in the inside. And right. He don't want us to be burnt crisp on the outside. Oh, right. But He want us to be rounded. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. He want us to be done. Hallelujah. So that He can use us. Glory to God. Half-hearted Christian. God can't use you if you're half-hearted. Hallelujah. He wants your whole heart. Hallelujah. You, uh, Christians, and things aren't going well with you, that's not necessarily a wilderness experience. Well, things are not going well with you, don't think it's a, te a, a wilderness experience because it's not necessarily a wilderness experience. I can tell you what a wilderness experience is because I done been there. All right. Hallelujah. All right. But God brought me out. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is more likely the consequence of your half-heartedness if you are planning around with the things of the world, are you playing around with things in the world? Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> if you are playing around with the things in the world and everything going on at Hayride, a Hayride in your life, that is the most. That is the most likely a consequence of your own actions and not a wilderness experience. Amen. We are speaking to those who truly love, truly love the Lord, and somehow out of the blue you suddenly love all your emotions. Right. Well, God don't, well, huh. and your feelings for serving the Lord, your worship seems to be dry. You can't go on your emotions. You got to love the Lord. You got to do what's right. Yes. Because I can sit here. Let me tell you. I can sit down somewhere and I can bring my emotions on myself. I can make myself cry. And yes. you, I mean, I, I can do things to, you know, just reason within myself. And you'll think that is, what's wrong with somebody do something to you? Or it might be God. But the devil is a liar. It's not God. It's not God. Itself. During your wilderness experience, we need to pray. We need to pray the same way we did before we pay before we pay no attention to your feelings. Pay attention to what God's word says. Don't lean on your feelings. Those prayers are heard too. Why? Because the Bible says this. It's nothing, it has nothing to do with your feelings. In John 5, 14, 15, it is a confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that the, He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that he, we have what we ask for of Him. We pray the same way during the wilderness experience. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You can, how many of you know that you can go through the wilderness and still be able to lift your hands and worship God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, and you're not letting your wilderness experience get you down. 
Don't let your experience get you down. You're going to go through trials. You're going to have tribulation. But pray. But worship God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Pray. We pray the same way. Amen. Glory to God. If we pray according to His will, the Word of God says He hears us. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. And if He hears us, we know that we have that for which we have asked. Yes. You know, whatever the petition is, we ask it, and if He hears, we'll Amen. get it. Yeah. Regardless of how yeah. we feel, or no matter what we say. Maybe there are physical problems that won't see, that don't seem to go away. Or there are other family concerns that press in on you. It is still the same problem. It, in normal situations, you go to the Lord and feel as if your prayers are being heard and answered. You may be going through a tough time right now. Mm. Yes. But you don't feel as tough right now. God has deserted you. God never leaves us alone. Never. Never. I don't care what we're going through. Hallelujah. I used to hear Sister Pam sing a song. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. And Jesus is just a whisper away. Yes. Hallelujah. He's Hallelujah. not that far. Yes. Hallelujah. Because He wouldn't leave you while you're going through. That's not the kind of God we serve. Yes. But He will test your faith. This is a test. He'll test your faith. Yes. Wow. By doing the wilderness experience, you do feel as though God has deserted you. Sometimes, a lot of times I did, but I don't anymore. Yes. Because yes. I know the words say, Lord, I'm with you always. Yes. He's with me. You feel yes. like you have been deserted and you feel like your prayers have not been heard. Your worship is oh. you come to church and you oh. don't worship, don't praise the Lord, don't lift Amen. your hands, don't do anything. In fact, your whole spiritual life seems to be a flop. Friends, we're, we're supposed to be happy in Christ Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. yes. Friend, you are not the first one to experience this feeling, nor will you be the last. The greatest king in history, King David, had felt that way. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And King David had enough wilderness experience to write a book, and he wrote the book, some books and songs. Can't you under can't you can't you my eyes? Thank you, time. Can't you conversate with him? Do you feel like the world say, don't, do you feel him? <laughs> do you feel him? Do you feel, where he, you, do you feel where he's coming from? All right. Hallelujah. All right. Yes, you can feel. Hallelujah. God, has, he, has, he, he feels our feelings. The word says he's tempted in every point that we're tempted. He feels our feelings. Mm -hmm. But he don't sin. Mm -hmm. So if we like him and he don't sin, why we sin? Because we're not like him yet. We ain't seasoned enough yet. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can't you? But David ends with one of his songs was a pure worship. He never forgot who God is. And he never forgot from where his strength come from. Psalms 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pits and out of the miry mud and place. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my heart. Hallelujah, I got a song that the angels can sing. Hallelujah, I've been redeemed. Are you yeah. redeemed? He yes. put a new song in his yeah. mouth. A hymn of praise to our God. Yes. Hallelujah, many will and fear and Put their trust in the Lord. Psalms 46, 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength and ever present yes, help Lord. in the time yes. of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mouth is fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and the fire and foam and the mountains quake at it with their saying. I, the lonely way to get out of the wilderness experience is to pay attention to the symptoms. 
need some medicine? God got the prescription. He got the medicine. Yeah, he does. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. You need the, the medicine to get out of your sickness and symptoms that you have. You need the word to read the word of God. You Amen. need to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The whole yeah. thing is based on the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes. It's the whole thing. Your whole Everything. life. Yeah. Everything is yes. based Everything. on the word of God. Yes. If you read the word and study the word, you won't have too many symptoms. And if you have symptoms, the word of God will come out of you, come up out of you, and it will be your medicine. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. You don't even need a teaspoon. All you got to do is just say a word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it will be your medicine. Yeah. Glory to God. You must go all the way through the experience. Don't give up. Trust God because Trust God, God is faithful. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Glory yes. to God. I thought that the whole idea was it was our was to just get through the wilderness experience. Any way I could. And that's what I did. Any way I thought that I could get through, I got through. But I wasn't true to God. I wasn't true to God. There was a whole lot of times I thought I was true to God. Yes. And I knew what I knew to be true. But I was not true to God. And I know that I'm not by myself. But now I know. Hallelujah. I know now. Hallelujah. And the mistakes that I made. And when I thought I was true, I'm true now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You must go all the way through the experience. Early in the Christian walk, I thought the whole idea was just get through the wilderness of spirit any way you can. Many times I quit early. Don't quit. It's only a test. Yes. Many times I quit early and when I did, guess what happened? The experience ended and I thought, wow, I'm going to have to go through this again anyway. I learned to I learned a lot through my experience in my wilderness. The reason it ended was because I quit. I failed the test. And if you want to know who passed the test, all you got to go is in the book of Hebrews. Abraham passed the test. Hallelujah, Enoch passed the test. Noah passed the test. It's right there. The report card. All you got to do is turn to Hebrew and you'll see the report card. They got all A's on the report card. They passed the test. All God wants you to do is don't quit. Stay in the race. The race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to he who endures unto the end. Endure. Hallelujah. James tells you to endure. Hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. You can make it. I didn't think I could make it. But I thank God for Sister for a Minister Pam. Hallelujah. I thank God for Sister Pam. Because she keeps me encouraged. And when I say, I can't do this, Sister Pam. Oh, yes, you can. Don't tell me what you can do. And I love Sister Pam. Because she doesn't take it easy on me. She just tells me what God's word says. And she pushes me. She pushes me up. When I want to sit down, she nudges and she pushes Praise me. God. You don't know what a blessing Sister Pam has been to me Praise since God. the day she came to my house and she sung that song. Praise He'll God. do it again. God placed me in her life yes. and placed God. her in my life through a song. And every time she finished the song of God, I weep because there's a message in it for me. And when she sings, it's a healing in it for me. There's a medicine and it does something for my spirit. And I thank God. And this is the true word that I'm telling you. Because I tell Sister Pam that a long time ago, then I, Sister, it ain't just now. It's a long time ago. And I thank I, I love her. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I've got the praise you, Lord. 
I thought the whole idea was to get through the experience where you got fooled. Wow, I would have, I would have ended right this thing right away if I knew that I had to go through it just this long. The reason it ended was because I quit. You failed your final test. Hang in your Christian people. God wants to go wants to go through with you. I told you God never leaves you. You yes. think you in the furnace by yourself, but he in there with you. He's right in there with you. You ain't in the den by yourself with them lions. Oh no. You would never make it. God's in there with you. Face. Yes. It can happen. It will happen. Yes. If we allow God to do what he needs to do in our life. Jesus told Simon Peter that he would be going through a wilderness experience that would sift him like wheat. That Satan would sift him like wheat. Yes. And that Satan desired to death. His desire is to sift you like wheat. Yes. Take yes. everything from you. Strip you naked and leave you bare. Yes. He desires to do. He don't want to see yes. you with anything. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. yes. Amen. But that says, but there he, then he said, but I have prayed for you. Jesus prayed for him that, his, that he failed not. Yes. That his faith would fail. It is because you passed the oh, test. You learned what God wanted you to do. Pass the test. Abraham went the through test. them. Moses went through them. Elijah went through them. Jeremiah, Jeremiah went through them. David went through them, Ezekiel went through them, just about everybody went through them. You're going to go through them. You have to pass the test. Yes. Hallelujah. you got to pass it. And that's the Old Testament experience of the people in the Old. You have to go through. There's no escaping it and there's no going around. There's no going around. You have to go through. You can't go under it. You can't go around it. you got to go through it. Hallelujah. And I thank you. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ultimately, we need to grow up. That's what we need to do. And we yes. need to react to the wilderness experience. That's what we need to do. Yes, Lord. And we need to act like the poor Christian. When we find yes. ourselves in these situations, we must turn to the Lord. And determined to worship Him even more and all the stronger. We need to pray all the more than what we was praying. We need to study the Word all the more than what we was studying. Determine in your all heart, right. that's what we need. That's determination. Yes, that we will be with. That, that God will be with us and we will have the right spirit and the right heart. Determination. determination. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Determine in your heart that you're going to do what the will of God says. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Make that determination today. Yes, yes. Get understanding. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing distract you from God. Jesus. Nothing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Romans 8, 29 said God is good. He doesn't need our help. He, God will conform us, our ways to His ways. Yes. If we let Him, He'll conform our ways to His ways. We need the mind of Christ. We need to let God's mind be in our mind. We need to think like Him. We need to walk like Him and we need to act like Him. We need to gird up ourselves and be like Jesus. All oh, just to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's all I want. Yeah. It's just to be like Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to yeah. God. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah.